Salaam you are watching the international daily roundup by People's Dispatch our selection of some of the top news stories from around the world let's first take a look at today's headlines Argentina has joined China's Belt and Road Initiative Kashmiri journalist Fahad Shah has been arrested Palestinian prisoners launched general mobilization of protest and Tunisia's president has dissolved the country's top judicial body Argentina and China have signed an agreement on cooperation as part of the Belt and Road Initiative or BRI. Delegations led by presidents Alberto Fernandez and Xi Jinping met in Beijing on the 6th of February. Argentina said that the pact will allow it to access over 23 billion dollars in guaranteed financing for investment and works. News reports indicate that this includes 14 billion dollars approved under the Strategic Dialogue for Economic Cooperation and Coordination. another close to 10 billion dollars will be presented in an ad hoc group under the BRI both countries have also agreed to expand trade and a five year plan for agricultural cooperation they have also signed cooperation documents covering 13 areas including green development aerospace and tech innovation they will also continue cooperation on local currency swaps during sunday's meeting argentina reiterated its commitment to the one china principle China also supported the country's sovereign claims over the Malvinas Islands. The Argentine delegation also thanked China for the supply of the Sinopharm COVID vaccine. Both countries are negotiating over the production of the vaccine by the Sinogium Biotech Lab in Buenos Aires. Argentina follows Nicaragua in signing a memorandum of understanding for the BRI. China's Global Times quoted President Fernandez saying that Argentina would be willing to work with China under the multilateral framework. This would include greater role in promoting cooperation between China and CELAC. The arrest of another journalist in Jammu and Kashmir has prompted outrage in India. Pulwama police detained Fahad Shah on the 4th of February for posting supposedly anti-national content on social media. An official statement read that such posts amounted to glorifying terrorist activities and causing disaffection against the country. Shah has been charged under the, under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. He is also facing charges of sedition and public mischief under the Indian Penal Code. Shah is the founding editor of online news magazine The Kashmir Wala. He was summoned in relation to the outlet's report on a gunfight in Pulwama district. Security forces claimed that a top militant of the Jaish-e-Mohammed group and three associates had been killed. Among them was 17-year-old Inayat Ahmed Mir. His family stated that he was innocent and held a protest demanding his body be returned. These claims were included in the broader local reporting in the case. Mir's family was booked under several sections of the UAPA and the Penal Code. Fahad Shah was among four journalists summoned for allegedly incorrect reporting in the case against the family. He was remanded to 10 days in judicial custody starting Saturday. This follows shortly after the arrest of fellow Kashmirwala journalist Sajad Gul. He was also booked under the Public Safety Act and is imprisoned at the Court Bawal Jail. Palestinian prisoners have declared a general mobilization of protest against Israel. The Detainees Affairs Commission has said that the action is against new reprisal measures by the police service or IPS. The authority has reneged on key agreements reached with prisoners in September 2021. Israel launched a widespread crackdown on Palestinians after the Gilboa prison outbreak. This included solitary confinement, a ban on family visits and access to the canteen and limits on daily outdoor time. Palestinian prisoners protested these repressive measures through acts like hunger strikes and setting fire to jail cells. Finally, a series of agreements were reached with, with the Israeli authorities. Following the imposition of new restrictions, Palestinian prisoners are protesting once again. Starting today, February 7th, all partisan regulatory committees representing the prisoners stand dissolved. Prison officials will now have to deal with each prisoner individually. Palestinians in the Rimon and Nafa prisons have also decided to lock down all sections of the facility. This is in response to Israel's decision to cut down their break time by half. Prisoners and rights groups have also pointed to severe medical negligence in Israeli prisons. The Palestinian Prisoner Society stated that last week alone, at least half of the people in the Ofer prison had tested positive for COVID-19. Israel reportedly also blocked the donation of warm clothing and blankets to prisons in January. And finally, Tunisian President Kais Saied has dissolved the Supreme Judicial Council. He announced on February 6th that he would issue a temporary decree to the body. 
The council was set up in 2016 and is tasked with ensuring judicial independence and discipline and granting promotions to judges. Said previously also suspended the country's parliament and constitution in July 2021. He has scheduled a constitutional referendum for July of this year and new parliamentary elections in December. Speaking on Saturday, Said accused the Judicial Council of bias, corruption and delaying sensitive investigations. His announcement also coincided with planned protests marking nine years since the assassination of Chokri Belaid. The leader of the leftist Democratic Patriots Unified Party was killed outside his home in 2013. Belaid's killing was followed by the assassination of People's Movement leader Mohammad Brahmi a few months later. Saeed also invoked Belaid, stating that some judges had manipulated that case. Despite a total ban on protests, he also seemed to encourage people to take to the streets on Sunday. The Tunisian Workers' Party was among groups which held planned protests demanding justice for Belaid. The party denounced deliberate disruptions in the investigation into the assassination. It has also condemned the manipulation of the killing by successive governments, including the ruling system in power currently. That's all we have on today's episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more on all of these stories and the work that we do at People's Dispatch, you can visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. And do give us a follow on all the regular social media platforms for updates. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.